而港督彭定康啊，以港大校監嘅身份出席，主持問答時間。不過李光耀咧，總共只係答咗兩個問題啫。其中一個問題係由港督提出嘅。港督問到英國喺過去五十年撤出亞洲殖民地嘅過程當中啊，李光耀從中係得到乜嘢嘅啟示？ On the whole, it has been a disappointing exercise. I remember as a student in Britain being taught constitutional law by a very distinguished professor who had been one of Churchill's cabinet secretaries. And he illustrated with the example of Ceylon how the ideal transition to democracy and self-government would take place. Uh, they had their first municipal elections in 1932 for mayor of Colombo and a council for Colombo. They had two universities. They had a thick layer of uh, professionals and administrative officers. They had large sterling balances, so they started off with all the advantages that would ensure progress and prosperity. Of course, he, I was taught this in 1947, when Ceylon had just got independence, and India, of course, had just gone into turmoil with breakup of Pakistan and India. I have never believed. That democracy brings progress. <laughs> I know it to have brought regression. I watch it year by year, every two years when I meet my fellow members of the leaders of the Commonwealth. And it need not have been thus. The British never governed these countries by one man, one vote. It was one British government, one British resident, and his word was law. And he had good district officers, whose word was also law, for that district. I think, regardless of the present missionary zeal of the Americans of democracy and human rights, which has broken up the Soviet Union, it would be misguided to believe. That what has worked in very special circumstances in amongst European societies, and what is barely working in Korea and Taiwan, is universally valid. How to establish good government? Good government means a government that considers itself a trustee of the people, whether you're king, chief, or whatever. Not somebody in temporary charge and insecure, and therefore out to to settle an annuity and a nest egg for yourself, which is what has happened in so many countries. So, if you ask me what my thoughts on decolonization are, I think they are grim, because Western political sci scientists. Have not lived in these societies, have not understood that what is required is economic progress, development, and the final blossoming of a large educated middle class, which alone can sustain a democracy. When you have 60 to 70 percent of your population educated. Knowing what will work and what will not work, then one man, one vote makes sense. If I give way on Hong Kong to the British, who do not have either military or economic clout to hurt me, then I'm inviting trouble from Chris Patton. I mean, sorry, from Bill Clinton. <laughs> Chris Patton. Chris Patton can only. Express his exasperation, <laughs> but Bill Clinton can turn MFN off.